Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. It was an exciting week last week at the International Convention where I got this shirt from my friends in District 49, Hawaii. I paid for it, but <laughs> <laughs> also worth noting that today is Admissions Day or Statehood Day in Hawaii. It is the anniversary of Hawaiian Statehood, August 21st, 1959. And a lot of Hawaii was there at this conference, as was a lot of the world. I'm going to start off by playing a, pr a promotion video that uh, Toastmasters International had on their website for some time. And some of you may have seen this, but it, it was from last year, and I kind of give you an idea of the flavor of the uh, entire conference. And so if I pick the right one, it'll be this one. And uh, I'll use that a little bit. This goes on in the half, so. Join us for the 84th Toastmasters International Convention this August. Connect with Toastmasters from around the globe at the iconic Caesars Palace Resort in Las Vegas, Nevada. Experience the excitement and fanfare of the opening ceremonies. Be inspired by world-class international speakers. Toastmasters. A place where communicators are born. So who's more successful, Bill Gates or Mother Teresa? I think the answer is they're equally successful. Share in the exhilaration of the 2015 World Championship of Public Speaking. And that's why you're sitting up there. Sometimes a disconnect is a good thing. Ladies and gentlemen, when I look at you, I see. But I don't know what it is. Oh. <laughs> I knew I saw something in him. I would point out one thing. This gentleman here is the outgoing international president. He is from the United Arab Emirates. And for anything formal, he was in full dress whites with the top and, and everything else, so it was really kind of cool. Come celebrate 90 years of Toastmasters history with us. Okay, everything you saw in there uh, really was the way it looked. And this is the way we looked. <laughs> Red and I had a grand time. And, uh, something for a backdrop here. I have a program. Uh, we'll pass this around later or make it available if you want to see it. I'm not going to pass it around right now. But basically, everything that happened was in here. And then there were individual things for the contests and this, that, and the other thing. I have a pile this thick of similar documents. But it was really an exciting, well organized organization. Uh, presentation, a well-organized conference, and, and those of you that have been to a district conference, nothing compared to uh, the international. So I got there on Wednesday. We started off with a board of directors meeting, or actually it was a board of directors briefing, which I had never attended before. And the president, uh, actually the, well, was now the chief executive officer of Toastmasters, uh, Daniel Rex, who's become the executive director, said there are now five, 15, over 15,000 clubs in 98 districts in 135 countries, and that is absolutely amazing. Uh, they passed out the new strategic plan. I'm not going to bore you with the details, but it's really glossy and really slick if anybody wants to, to look at it. But there were a couple of things they did in here that I thought was interesting. They simplified some of the mission statements. Now, the club mission statement that you've heard read here at the club level stays, so far, has stayed the same. It's long. But the other two, the Toastmasters International mission statement has been shortened to simply we empower individuals to become more effective communicators and leaders, period. The district mission, those of you who have heard the district mission read at the district conference and you're falling asleep, it is now reads, we build new clubs and support all clubs in achieving excellence. Oh. Pretty cool, huh? That was, that was that. That was good to hear. So after that, the, I think the best feature of the afternoon was, Fred wasn't there yet, but Dana Lamont, who was a past international contest winner in 1992. He is blind, and he's also Afro-American, 
and he gave a very humorous, and very dramatic uh, educational session on, on the, the needs of the club. And he did it in such a way that we were all laughing for the whole time. But his major message was simply that if you get into a routine and you're stuck in a routine, your club's not going to grow. You have to keep changing, you have to keep evolving. That was the message. Thursday morning we had the Hall of Fame where each district that achieved distinguished got to stand up on the stage with our big banner and get our picture taken with the international president. So we were part of that. And then the afternoon and evening, there were the semifinals of the speech contests. And Arnie was actually in one of those about four years ago, the last time we were in Las Vegas. And unfortunately, everybody else besides Arnie was good, and Arnie did not survive that. But there were literally <laughs> survived. <laughs> He's still alive. I survived. <laughs> there were literally ten different serious. contests. There were three periods of, of contests. So there were four contests at one time, then three, and then three. So the most you could possibly go to was two of the semifinal rounds. And that was, or rather, three of the semifinal rounds, but if you wanted to eat dinner anywhere in there, there were only two. Fortunately, I was at the, the round where the, not only the District 4 contestant, 49 contestant was, but also where the winner, the ultimate winner was. So that was excellent. On Friday, we had three candidates for accredited speaker, which is higher up than DTM. That's become a professional speaker. All three candidates were women. Only one of them survived the the uh, candidacy. <laughs> so that was, uh, they were all three were, were quite good. And then we had other ex excellent educational sessions that day. Saturday we had the morning business meeting, boring as some, but we voted <laughs> electronically and that was a pile of laughs too, just trying to get that working. <laughs> and then the World Championship of Public Speaking. And what I'm going to show you next is an excerpt from the winner of that. If I can get to it there. The beginning and part of the middle and then the end. You're not going to see the whole thing. I saw, I had the whole thing later this morning, but uh, it's a Facebook, um, Serapidus Facebook uh, link that died already. So here we go. This is the guy that won. He's from Saudi Arabia. And he's really funny. He even doesn't show you. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Smoking kills? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Do you know that the amount of people dying from diabetes are three times as many people dying from smoking? Yet if I pulled a snicker bar, nobody would say anything. <laughs> Do you know that the leading cause of lung cancer is that actually a cigarette? It's your DNA. You could smoke for years and nothing would ever happen to you. This whole war against smoking is just to restrict the farming of tobacco. Mr. Contest Chair, Politos Masters and Guests, I use these arguments, even though I just made them up. <laughs> <laughs> a simple choice of word can make a difference between someone accepting or denying your message. You can have a very beautiful thing to say, but say it in the wrong words and it's gone. My friend Nasser, he loved his father, idealized his father. He would do anything to make him happy. But his father was the kind of person who's not easy to impress. And year after year, Nasser tried and his father was like, yeah. <laughs> First year in college, Nasser got straight A's, and he thought to himself, this is it. This is what will finally make my dad proud. He picked up the phone, he called his dad, Dad, I got straight A's. Are you proud? Please tell me you're proud, Father. Yeah, listen, son, I'll have to call you back, I'm busy. Words have power. Words are power. Words could be your power. You can change a life, inspire a nation, and make a, this world a beautiful place. Isn't that what we all wanted? 
Isn't that what we are all in this hall? Your mouth can spit venom, or it can mend a broken soul. Ladies and gentlemen, let that be our goal. Come to sir. So that gives you an idea. I was only part of the speech, and some of the humor that was in it was left out. But I heard his semi-final speech, and it was one of the funniest speeches I ever heard. And it was called Change Your Seat, and he made a lot of fun of, it, of uh, airlines and being on airlines. But the idea was, if you don't like where you are, change your seat. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, I'm going to try to get a video of that if it exists. So it was a great conference. Uh, a couple things that uh, I didn't expect that really impressed me is there were a lot of people from Africa there, a lot of countries in Africa now with Toastmasters clubs. I saw a number of Islamic women there which I didn't expect, but they were there. And I believe that through Toastmasters, the world is going to be a better place as people uh, meet each other across the international realm. Madam Toastmaster.